Question 1. A university student on his summer break wishes to purchase 12 folders ahead of his final year at university. He notices that two online stationery retailers have promotions on folders. In pounds, how much cheaper is it for the student to purchase the 12 folders from the second retailer than the first? So we need to work out the cost for each retailer and then we'll compare to find the difference. For the first retailer we get 3 for the price of 2. So the price of one batch of this, which is 3 folders, would be 2 times £3.50, which equals 7. If we want 12 folders, one batch of the folders is 3, so we want 4 lots of the £7. So that's £7 times 4, which is £28. And free delivery, so there's nothing to add on. For the second retailer, one batch gives us six folders for the price of five. So the price of five folders is £2.50 times five, which is £12.50. One batch is six folders, so 12 divided by six will require two batches. Two times £12.50 is £25. But now we need to add on the delivery fee of £2. So £25 plus £2 equals £27. Finally, the difference is 28, take away 27, so it is £1 cheaper to buy from the second retailer than the first. Question 2. A school is purchasing stationery before the new term commences. The school requires 126 pencils, 48 books and 80 crayons. In pounds, how much does it cost the school in total to buy the stationery? Let's look at pencils first. So one batch gets you five pencils for the price of four. The price of four pencils is four times 25 pence, which equals a pound. We need to work out how many batches go into the 126. So that's 126 divided by five, which is 25, remainder one. So 25 batches times a pound per batch costs 25 pounds. And then we need to add on another 25p, which is 0 0.25 pounds, to get us the full cost of 126 pencils. 48 books costs two pounds for one unit, so that's two pounds times seven is 14 pounds per batch of eight. 48 divided by eight, is the number of books divided by the number per batch, which is six, so we require six batches. Six batches times 14 pounds per batch gives us a total of 84 pounds total. Okay, the crayons cost 90 pence per unit. We're gonna call that 0 0.90 pounds. And we have 30% off the unit price. So that's a multiplier of 0 0.7, which gives us a new value of 63 pence per crayon. At 63 pence per crayon times 80 crayons, we get a total cost of 50 pounds 40. Finally, we just need to add these three up. 50 pounds 40 plus 20 pounds 25 plus 84 pounds gives us five, six, nine, and 15 for a total of £159.65. Question 3. The students in a history lesson all sit a test. The test is out of a maximum of 80 marks. Which of the following statements are true? A. The most common mark was 60. So the mode is defined as the mark that was achieved most often, so the most common mark was 60. That's true. B. Not one student got a mark below 30. This one is useful to draw a small box and whisker plot. In this case, our median is 50. And if we want to see if a student could get below 30, the best way to think of this is assuming that the mode is the highest value that could be achieved. We could argue that 60 would be the lowest value that the highest mark could take. So if 60 is the highest mark, then by that reasoning, the lowest mark must be 30. Since the lowest mark is 30, no one got a mark below this value, so this statement is true. 
finally see not one person got 81 marks. The test is out of a maximum of 80 marks, so that is impossible. Our final answer is true, true, and false. Question 4. A head of department wants to compare the performance of two mathematics classes that he teaches. He does this by first comparing the recent mock test results in both classes. Which of the following statements are true? The range of marks for class B is 25 marks higher than the class A. To do that, we need to find the difference between these two ranges. That's 40 minus 16, 24. 24 is not equal to 25, so that's false. For our next one, not one person in class B got a mark of 39. In class B, we have that the mode is 80, so this must be a mark that was attained. If we assume that 80 is the smallest mark on a box and wicks plot like this, if we assume 80 is the highest mark here, then the difference between the highest and the lowest marks is the range. That's 40. So, the lowest mark in this case would be 40. This is the smallest value the highest mark could take. So this is the largest value that the lowest mark could take. Uh, the smallest value the lowest mark could take. So, 40 doesn't equal 39. So, this one is true. question C, it is possible that the highest mark in class A was the same as the median mark in class B. Similarly for section B here, we know the mode in class A was 54, so that mark must have been attained. If we add on the range, that gives us a mark that could have been attained also, 70. It is possible that the highest mark in class A was the same as the median mark in class B. This is a possible highest mark, it's higher than the median and it obeys the rules of the mode and the range, and it's equal to the median, so this is true. Finally, almost false, this is true, and this is true. Question five. A shopkeeper decides to count the number of sweets, chocolate bars, and packets of crisps that were sold on a day. He records the information into the bar chart below. Which of the following statements are true? A. 13 more sweets were sold than chocolate bars. We see that 8 chocolate bars were sold and 20 sweets were sold, so the difference between that is 12. The claim is 13, so that's false. B. The number of sweet sales is 150% higher than the number of chocolate bar sales. So we know the chocolate bar sales were 8, and we want to increase that by 150%, which is the same as using a multiplier of 2.5. We've got that from finding 250%, so that's an increase of 150%, and converting that to a decimal. So 8 times 2.5 is 20, which is the number of sweets? That's true. C. 15 40 thirds of the total sales came from packets of crisps. So we know that there are 15 packets of crisps, and we just need to divide that by the total. So the total is 20, plus 8 chocolate bars, plus 15 packets of crisps, which is 15 over 43, so true. Finally, we have that this is false, true, and true. Question six. The distribution of grades across three different schools in a region is compared. Which of the following statements are true? A, 11 over 97 of the pupils across all three schools got the grades D to E. To find out this, we need to first sum up the number of pupils who got grades D to E, so that's four, plus 8, plus 12, and then find the total of all the students. So we need 1 plus 10 plus 4 plus 30 plus 25 plus 15 plus 4 plus 8, which is 97. So the proportion is 12 over 97. The claim was 11 over 97, so that's false. B. School B got 150% more A star and A grades than school C. School B is the middle column here, and school B got 10 A star and A grades, while school C got 4. So let's increase 4 by 150%, that's a multiplier of 2.5, or 250%, which we got from doing 100% plus 150%. So 4 times 2.5 is 
is 10, which matches school B's number of grades, plus true. Finally, C, 35 out of 97 of the total pupils were in school A. We already found out the total number of pupils earlier, so that's out of 97. And the pupils in school A is the first column of each section, so that's 1 plus 30 plus 4, which is 35 over 97 as expected, plus true. So we have false, true, and true. Question 7. All the students in a school are quizzed on what method of transport they take to get to school in the morning. The results of the survey are presented in the pie chart below. If there are 1,200 pupils in the school, how many of them do not walk to school? So, we want 45% of the students walk to school, so that means 55% do not walk to school. So 55% of the 1,200 pupils is 55% times 1,200, 0 0.55 times 1,200 equals 660 pupils. Question 8. All the students in a school are quizzed on what method of transport they take to get to school in the morning. The results of the survey are presented in the pie chart below. There are 1,200 pupils in the school. If 12.5% of the students who selected other travel to school by taxi, how many students travel to school by taxi? So first we need to figure out the number of students that travelled by other. That's 22% of the 1,200. That's 0 0.22 as a decimal multiplied by 1,200, which equals 264 pupils came by other. Next, we need to take that 264 pupils, and we know that 12.5% of that 264 came by taxi. So that's 12.5% as a decimal, that's 0 0.125, and that gives us 33 pupils travel by taxi. Question 9. The fluctuations in price of three stocks are monitored. The quarterly price of each of the three stocks is captured in the chart below. What was the percentage increase from the price of stock A in quarter 1 to the price of stock A in quarter 4? So stock A in quarter 1 is this one, £1.80, and in quarter 4 it's £2.88. So to find out the increase we're going to do £2.88 divided by 1.8, which gives us 1.6. As a percentage, that means that £2.88 £2 is 160% of £1.80. So 160% corresponds to a 60% increase, because we've got 100% plus 60% equals 160%. So that's our answer, 60% increase. Question 10. The fluctuations in price of three stocks are monitored. The quarterly price of each of the three stocks is captured in the chart below. Which of the following statements are true? A. The price of stock A and stock C was the same in Q2. So A is the dark red, C is the purple, and in Q2, they are both the same. True. B. Stock B was higher than stock A on two quarters. Stock B is the light pink, and stock A is the dark pink, so in quarter one, Stock A is higher, in quarter 2 stock B is higher, in quarter 3 stock B is higher again, and in quarter 4 stock A is higher. So this occurred twice, stock B was higher than stock A, so that's true. C. 5 twelfths of the recorded prices exceeded £2. So we have 4 quarters times 3 stocks, that's 12 prices in total, and we just need to count up the number of them they exceeded two pounds, and then we'll have our fraction. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six over 12, that's a half. Hmm, the best way to do this is with you. Yeah. 
So we need to count up the number that exceeded two pounds. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and this one is exactly two pounds, so it does not exceed. So we have five over 12, that can't be simplified down. So that's our final answer, five twelfths, which is true. Finally, all three were true, and that's our final answer.